I'm Victoria Davis. Welcome to my kitchen. And what we're going to do today is we're going to be making some non-toxic cleaners. And it's a very simple process. I think you're going to enjoy this. Now you might wonder why you would make non-toxic cleaners. Why go to that effort? Well, I can think of four really good reasons. One is your safe, safety and health. And the second is it's so simple. The third is it's cheaper than buying the products in the store. And the fourth is it's really better for the environment to use simple products. Um, the, so let's talk about your safety and health. Now the Poison Control Center for the United States gets several calls throughout the year. And one of the top five poisons that they get calls for are household cleaners. That's how dangerous that they can be. Um, they can be irritating to your skin. They cause indoor air pollution. If you read the back of some of the store-bought brands, you'll see it says to be cleaning in a well-ventilated area, and there's a reason for that. And we also said that it was very simple. The Environmental Protection Agency for the United States estimates that we purchase on a regular basis over 60 hazardous products. Now that includes in your garage, but it's also a lot of products that are under your sink, in the kitchen, in the bathroom, and other places in your house. So think about that. That's 60 regularly purchased products. Now if you started making your own non-toxic cleaners and you're using primarily three different products, white vinegar, baking soda, and liquid soap, think about that, that that would be all that was under your sink instead of those 60 products. Now that's simple. Another reason is that it's good for the environment. When we pour this stuff down the drain, it goes into our septic systems and the wastewater treatment facilities. And those systems are not designed to take out all materials from the water. So when it gets dumped back into our drink into our water bodies, we end up drinking some of that. If you go online and Google um, Sebago Lake in Maine or San Francisco Bay, you'll find out that they have a lot of flame retardants in the water. And in San Francisco Bay, it's desexing the fish. So the fish are becoming all female. Imagine what it's doing to us. Um, and the other thing is that it saves money. When you make your own cleaners and you buy these simple ingredients, it, it just costs pennies to make a cleaner. When you buy a commercial product, you're paying for all that packaging, all that marketing and advertising, and you're paying for all that chemical engineering to come up with all the ingredients for that, including chemical fragrances, dyes, and things that you don't need for cleaning your home. Let's begin with some different recipes for non-toxic cleaners. I've got several of them. And the first one is an all-purpose disinfecting cleaner. Now the first thing you need, of course, is you need the ingredients. And we're talking about white vinegar. You would not use apple cider vinegar because that has some color in it or any other kind of vinegar. You want something that's clear so you don't cause stains. Then you've got baking soda. Oh, and by the way, this vinegar costs about two dollars and fifty cents for a gallon. This baking soda costs about seventy-five cents a pound and you can buy it for even less if you buy it in bulk. Now this is a little pricier item. I think this was about six dollars. This is a vegetable castile liquid soap. But again, if you bought this in bulk, it would cost less than half that. So between these three products, we can make a lot of cleaners. So the first one I said is going to be the all-purpose cleaner. You do need a spray bottle. If you're going to buy one new, you can get these in the gardening section. But you can reuse a bottle that you've already got. Just make sure it's really clean so that you, you're not contaminating your product. Now, so for the all-purpose disinfecting cleaner, because vinegar has disinfecting properties, we're going to take a tablespoon of liquid soap and we're going to mix it with a cup of warm water. So I'm actually going to use a funnel. And notice that I marked my bottle. You always want to mark your product so you don't get it confused with something else, especially if your bottles all look the same. 
So just take a Sharpie magic marker and label your, your product. Okay, so there's a tablespoon of liquid soap. And then we're going to take a cup of warm water. You can get this right out of the tap. And we're mixing the vinegar, I'm sorry, the water and the soap together first because if we mixed the vinegar in there first, it would clump. And a friend of mine didn't believe it really would, so we experimented, and it really does. So you want to mix the soap and the water first. And then we're going to add two-thirds cup of white vinegar, which I've already poured out into this cup. And that's it. And that is an all-purpose cleaner for anywhere in your house. Now, if you wanted to, you could add some essential oils. And these have antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral properties. And I have some different ones over here. You don't have to do this, but it kind of makes the cleaning fun. And some people don't like the smell of vinegar. Now, vinegar does have a strong smell, but so do all the commercial cleaners. And vinegar, the smell of vinegar, will dissipate. But if you don't like the smell, you can use some of these essential oils. I have cinnamon. I have grapefruit, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. I love grapefruit. I've got lavender. A lot of people like lavender. Um, I've got tea tree oil, which is an antiseptic. Um, it's just it's an all-purpose, great um, microbial killer. It's wonderful. And then I've got some rosemary. Same thing. They all have those properties. Tea tree oil especially is known for those antimicrobial properties. But so is lavender and cinnamon and these other essential oils. But we're not going to do that right now. But it's just an option. So we have this all-purpose cleaner. All you need then is a wet rag and you can go to town. So the next product we're going to make is a soft scrub. This, again, is very easy. It's only two ingredients. That's baking soda and the liquid soap. So we're going to start with the baking soda. I have my baking soda here that I bought in bulk. And I'm going to put in a half a cup. Now you can put in any amount of baking soda that you want. It depends on what the job is that you're doing. So if it's a big job, you're going to use more baking soda because the amount of soap that we're going to use is really just to make a consistency like frosting. So you don't have to know any of the quantities for these ingredients. You're just going to take this baking soda, whatever quantity you want, and we're going to add the liquid soap until we have like frosting. And we're just going to stir it. And I'm really going to have to clean my house after this because this is going to make a lot. So let's see what this looks like. This is getting kind of frosting-like. too dry. We're going to add a little more. I don't know, that's pretty close to frosting. <laughs> what do you think? Are we done? Kind of looks like frosting. So here's your soft scrub. So you've got the baking soda for kind of some grit action to get rid of, you know, any stains. And we've got the soap. So you just put this on a wet cloth or sponge and go ahead and clean your shower or your tiles or whatever you've got that you normally would use some kind of a soft scrub. So we're going to make some glass cleaner and you have options. You can make it with one part vinegar and one part water, 
or you can use straight club soda, or you can even use vodka if you want to. Um, so, but we're going to use the vinegar and water. And notice again, I have labeled my bottle. So we're going to use one part vinegar, and one part water, and then we're actually going to clean my window. Because I want you to see that you can dry it with crumpled up newspaper. That's something that I've always done, and it just makes it street free. It's a great way to do it. We all have newspaper around. So again, I'm going to use my funnel. I'm going to put in one cup of vinegar. And one cup of water. And that's it. So, just mix it together a little bit. We've got a rat, and now we're going to clean the window. So we're just going to spray our vinegar and water on the window. And I should point out that these nozzles, you can turn them so you can have different types of spray. So I've got this where it's really dispersing, but you could have a, a straight shot if you wanted it. So I'm just going to clean the window. And when you clean windows, it's best to have the sun out behind you so you can see where the streaks are. And you could also do vertical swipes on the inside and horizontal stripes on the outside so you knew which side of the glass where the streak was. So I've cleaned that. You can still see it's a little moist. So I'm going to take some newspaper. And I'm going to pull it up. And I'm just going to dry the window. Great for getting down in the corners. And that's your window cleaner and your dryer. Okay, our next cleaning product is going to be drain cleaner. Drain cleaners that you buy in the store are really toxic. They are just bad news. You certainly don't want them around your kids, especially little kids. Um, and just using this method, it's just so much safer. Um, and if you do it on a regular basis, you won't need to use any heavy duty cleaner. And if you get a clog that's just too tough for this to work, because it's something that's really jammed in there, you can use a plumber snake, you could use a coat hanger. Um, just try to avoid using the commercial drain cleaners. So we're going to use a half a cup of baking soda, and we're going to just dump it down the drain over here. And then we're going to follow it with a half a cup of vinegar and then let that set for 15 or 20 minutes and then pour in boiling water. We're just going to dump a half a cup of baking soda right in the drain. We're going to follow it by a half a cup of the white vinegar. You can see that foaming action of the two reacting and that is helping to declog the drain. And we're just going to let it do its job for about 15 minutes and then we're going to follow it with some very hot water from the stove. Okay, so our 15 minutes has gone by. We put our baking soda and vinegar down here and we had the reaction. And now we're going to add the boiling water to finish the job. So we're just going to pour this in. It's kind of a chaser. And if you have a sluggish drain, this works great. And if you do this on a regular basis, you won't have the clogs in your drain. If you want to clean off your cutting board surface at night and use kind of the disinfecting properties of the vinegar, what you do is before you go to bed, you squirt some on there and go to bed. It's that simple. And if you have areas that get wet and you're concerned about mold or mildew, like I have this area behind my sink, you just squirt it on there very lightly and leave it and just let it dry. Our next cleaner is a garbage pail deodorizer. You can also use this for a diaper pail or any other container that, that has a smell that you don't like. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a cup of baking soda again. 
And this time we're going to be adding the tea tree oil, which I already have talked about that has great antiseptic properties. Um, <clears throat> and we'll mix them together. And we're going to put them in my garbage bucket over here. So here we go. We've got a cup. Cup of baking soda, and we're going to add a teaspoon of the tea tree oil. So this comes out in little drips. That's so that you can really control how much you put into your products. So I'm just going to shake it out here to get us a teaspoon. And it does have a real strong antiseptic smell. I'm not sure if this is from Australia. I know that the Australian Army used to have it in their first aid kits. So you could also use it for first aid on your body, but you'd want to research that. So I'm just mixing in the tea tree oil into the baking soda. And Baking soda has such great deodorizing properties. I mean, you probably already have a box in your refrigerator to help with the smells in there. Okay, so I'm just mixing this together with a fork so I don't have any lumps. Open up my container, take out my trash. And just dump this right in there. And voila, you've got your deodorizer. It's that easy. I would leave the deodorizer into your waste bucket overnight just to, to clean out the smells. And then in the morning you can just dump that down the drain because it's great for your drain too. Our next cleaner is for your hands. And a lot of people are using antibacterial soaps to clean their hands, to clean their dishes, to clean all kinds of things in their homes. You don't really need to use antibacterial products. A lot of times the product or the ingredient in the antibacterial soap is a pesticide. And so we're using that on our hands, on our dishes. That's just not a healthy thing to do. And more than that, it's creating super bacteria. I was teaching a class on non-toxic cleaners and there was a nurse in my class and she said the triclosan or triclosan was used in surgical rooms to clean the, the surgery. Mm -hmm. And now it's not working as effectively because we have been using this um, antibacterial soap so much that we have created these superbugs. Really, soap and water is great for cleaning your hands. Um, if you really want to add some antibacterial um, action to your soap, you can add some of the essential oils that we talked about, like tea tree oil. Um, but really, just washing your hands for like 15 seconds, like the time it takes to sing Happy Birthday or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you're good. You don't need antibi antibiotics in your soap. What we're going to do is I have this, which people are, are kind of fond of. It's a foaming dispenser. So because of the type of um, pump it has, it will produce a foamy soap, which people like. And it, it is good in that you use less soap. So because people like that, you can pick these up at a health food store for a couple bucks if, if you're interested. Or you can just use a straight pump. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two-thirds of a cup of water... my funnel again. And then we're going to use a third of a cup of the liquid Castile soap. A lot of soaps are made like detergents. They're synthetic. So if you get like a Castile soap, it is vegetable based. Um, Dr. Bronner's is a popular one and also Vermont soaps. Um, they are kind of pricey, but they're so concentrated that you get a lot of use out of them. Okay. 
So we've got our soap and water in here. If you want to, you can add some liquid glycerin. Um, it adds a, a softener for your hands, and you can also get this in the health food store. So you could add like a teaspoon. You can just kind of play with it. You can add your essential oils at this point to add a scent. But really, just soap and water works. So let's see. Put the lid back on. Shake it up a little bit. And we've got foamy soap. All right, so our next cleaner is a no soap no rinse floor cleaner. It's vinegar and water and really that's pretty much all you need. If there's like a, a scuff mark or a tough stain you can just sprinkle some baking soda on it and kind of scrub it up and then mop your floor. So this is just super easy so we're going to try it out now. I've got a bucket of some hot water. I'm going to add just a cup of white vinegar and we're going to mop my floor. So I have an old-fashioned mop but <laughs> This works with any kind of mop. And again, if you want some scent, you can add a few drops of essential oil so you can have a pleasant experience while you're cleaning. <laughs> So the next cleaner that we have isn't really a cleaner, it's a fabric softener. And all it is, is putting half a cup of white vinegar into your rinse water of your washing machine for your laundry. It's great for softening, it has a little bit of whitening properties or brightening properties, and it's a disinfectant, so it's great for your laundry. If you have a softener dispenser on your machine, just fill it up with the vinegar up to the fill line. And I have friends who say they're not going back to the, um, the sheets because they have so much smell in them that they can't stand all that fragrance. So if you have trouble with fragrances, this is a great way to soften your clothes. Our next cleaner is a carpet deodorizer. And as we've talked about, baking soda is just great for deodorizing things. It absorbs odors. So what you can do is you can take some baking soda, whatever quantity that you think you need, depending on the size of your carpet. You can add some essential oil to it for a fragrance that you like. Just add a, you know, a teaspoon per pound of baking soda. Mix it up really well. You would sprinkle it onto your, onto your carpet. And I'm going to just sprinkle the baking soda on so you can see how easy it is. You just sprinkle it on. You're pretty liberal with the amount that you put down. You'd leave it there for about an hour. And then you just vacuum it up. baking soda in your vacuum cleaner bag because it'll be deodorizing all the stuff in your vacuum cleaner bag. For our next cleaner, we're going to make some silver cleaner. This is for silver silverware. Not for stainless steel, but for silver that gets tarnished. So what you do is you take a regular baking pan and you line the bottom of it with some foil. This will save you a lot of time. You have lots, lots of silver to clean. So we're just going to put these in here. I think I'll leave one out so you can see the difference. <laughs> we're going to add two teaspoons of salt. two teaspoons of baking soda, and then we're going to cover it all with really hot water. 
there's a chemical reaction in here where it makes the aluminum act like a magnet pulling the tarnish off. So we've got our two teaspoons of salt. Now we're adding two teaspoons of the baking soda. And a lot of these recipes, you don't really have to fuss with the measurements, but I'm doing that so you have some idea of the quantity. We just dump some in here. And then I've got some hot water in my kettle. Pour this in here to cover the silverware. And there's a sulfuric smell from it taking the tarnish off. So it's just been in there less than a minute. And you can see that made an incredible difference. Okay, so our next cleaner is also a silver cleaner or a jewelry cleaner. I just happen to have silver jewelry. So I've got two very tarnished earrings right here. And I'm going to clean one of them with toothpaste and then we'll compare them so you can see what a difference there is. So the first thing I do is I get my tooth toothpaste and I'd normally be in the sink. I've got a damp cloth here. I'm going to take one. I'm just going to get it a little moist. I'm going to put some toothpaste on it and I'm just going to rub it with my damp cloth to get the tarnish off. Now, the other method that I showed you would probably work with jewelry too, but the water's so hot that if you have different parts on it that might be glued on, like I've got a stone in this one, it, it could loosen the stone, so I wouldn't want to do that. The other method is great for getting into crevices and places um, that you would have difficulty getting to. This has a lot of crevices here. You could use um, cotton swabs to clean this or an old toothbrush. That would really get into the crevices here. So I'm just polishing this up. And some mornings I do this just before I go to work. So it doesn't take much time. But I want to do a good job so I can show you. So, okay. So that's like that. I'm just going to rinse it off in this water. the spot. And there it is. With just toothpaste. Those are the recipes that I have today. There are lots of other recipes out there and I just wanted to touch on some other ingredients that you might use. Um, there is a washing soda and there's borax. Now I didn't use either of these, but you could, but you have to be aware that even though they are natural minerals that are mined, um, they can be caustic, so you need to be careful. When you use the washing soda in particular, you want to wear gloves, and if you're concerned about um, children or pets getting into your cleaners, you may not want to use these. But they're great in the laundry, they're great, great for cleaning up stains, so you know it's your call. And there are lots of resources out there for finding recipes and doing research on them. You can research a commercial product and find out what's in it online. There's something called an MSDS, that's a material safety data sheet. You should be able to get that for a product and it will tell you all the ingredients. If you can't get it online, you can call the company and ask for it. When you're at the store and you're looking at products there and they say that they're green or they're all natural, you really don't know for sure. Unless they say that they provide all the labels, or all the ingredients on the label, you don't know what's in them because federal laws do not regulate labeling um, to make people put all the ingredients onto the label. Um, it could have something really nasty in there, but it's such a small quantity that they're not required. But if you use that cleaner, and this cleaner, and this cleaner, and they all have a little bit of something toxic in it, that really adds up. So you need to be cautious about what you buy. Um, some of the words that you want to look for on the label 
our warning, caution, flammable, caustic, uh, poison, danger. Here is an antibacterial all-purpose cleaner, and I'm going to read the label for you. It says, if on skin or clothing, take off contaminated clothing, rinse skin immediately with plenty of water for 15 to 20 minutes, call a poison control center or doctor for treatment advice, have the product container or label with you when calling a poison control center or doctor or going for treatment. So we have here Simply Green and it says precautions. Keep out of reach of children. Avoid eye contact. Eye irritation after contact may occur associated with glycol ether derivatives. If eye contact occurs, flush well with water. Use in well-ventilated areas. Do not dispose of decreasing resonates into or near storm drains, oceans, lakes, or streams. Okay, here we have a green cleaner and it says 96% is naturally derived, but you don't know what the other 4% is. Um, it says to keep out of reach of children, and it says it contains water, coconut-based, cleaning agent, soda ash, corn-based ethanol, glycerin, and fragrance with essential oil. Whenever it says fragrance, that's probably chemically derived, although this says fragrance with essential oils contains no phosphorus, contains no bleach. Um, so it's just always a question mark. So when you can make your own, it's just a good choice. This this might be a good choice, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. I'm only 96% sure. Here we have um, a heavy duty oven cleaner. And on the back it says, keep out of reach of children, danger in capital red letters. Corrosive, contains sodium hydroxide, will burn eyes and skin, harmful if swallowed. Now it says, first aid, eyes, immediately wash eyes with water, remove any contact lenses, and flush eyes for at least 15 minutes, and you may need to seek medical attention immediately. Skin contact, rinse immediately and remove contaminated clothing, wash thoroughly with soap and water, and continue flushing for at least 10 minutes. If discomfort persists, seek medical attention immediately. If swallowed, do not induce vomiting. Rinse mouth thoroughly and seek medical attention immediately. And it also says when you're using it, not to inhale the fumes. So imagine you're spraying this into your oven and you're going to hold your breath the whole time. And when you come out, do you think those fumes are not in your kitchen? They probably are. Here we have a common drain cleaner, and I'm going to read you the instructions. It says, open carefully and keep hand space, children and pets away. Do not squeeze the bottle, avoid splashing, and keep up and clean up spills at once. Never use a plunger during or after using this liquid because product may still be present if drain is not clear. Do not reuse empty container, rinse container, and place cap replace cap before discarding. And then in big red letters it says danger, keep out of reach of children, harmful if swallowed, may burn eyes, skin, and mucous membranes on contact. First aid, give immediately. And here we have a common soft scrub that you can use to clean in your home. Do not induce vomiting unless told to do so by a poison control center or doctor. Do not give anything by mouth to an unconscious person. Have the product container or label with you when calling a poison control center or doctor or going for treatment. Avoid contact with clothes, fabric, or carpet. Do not mix with other cleaning products as hazardous gases may result. So here we have a common disinfectant cleanser, a powder cleanser, and it says if swallowed, call, call a poison control center immediately for treatment advice. Have person sip a glass of water if able to swallow. Do not induce vomiting unless told to do so by the poison control center or doctor. Do not give anything to an unconscious person. If inhaled, remove to fresh air. If person is not breathing, call 911 or an ambulance. Then give artificial respiration, preferably mouth to mouth if possible. Call a poison control center or doctor for further treatment advice. Here we have a common bathroom cleaner, and on it it says, 
do not get in eyes on skin or clothing, wear safety glasses or goggles. That's something we all do when we clean the bathroom. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling. Remove contaminated clothing and wash before reuse. We have a toilet bowl cleaner here. And if you read the instructions or the precautionary statements, it says hazard, hazards to humans and domestic animals, danger, corrosive, causes irreversible eye damage and skin burns, harmful or fatal if swallowed. Do not get in eyes on skin or on clothing. Wear protective eyewear, safety glasses, goggles, protective gloves, and protective clothing. Wash thoroughly with soap and water after handling and before eating, drinking, chewing gum, or using tobacco. Remove and wash container contaminated clothing before reuse. Do not breathe vapors or fumes. Keep out of reach of children. Contains hydrochloric acid. Not something you probably want under your counter if you have little children. It's really false advertising to say that they're a green product and then you find out, oh my gosh, it's harmful. Or, you, or there are products out there that support women's breast cancer and then you find out it has an ingredient in it that causes cancer. So you have to remember these are companies and they're out to make money and you, you just have to have to watch out for yourself. So we've got several books here. This book is Slug Bread and Beheaded Thistles. This has some housekeeping, non-toxic housekeeping and gardening tips in here. This is my favorite book. It's Non-Toxic House Cleaning by Amy Kolb Noyes. It's um, published in Vermont and the author lives in Vermont. Just a small little book but it's a great little book with lots of good recipes in it. And then you've got one here, Annie Bertold Bond. She's a very famous um, person for doing these um, household cleaning, non-toxic cleaners. She also has some cards that you can get that have the recipes on the cards. This is one I've had a long time by Karen Logan, Clean House, Clean Planet. Uh, clean your house with pennies a day, the safe, non-toxic way. And she's got a bunch of recipes in it. And you can see that I've used it a lot. Um, this one, Household Yard and Office Chemicals, it's a dictionary. So if you go in the store and they have a 25 letter word on the back of the label for a certain chemical, you can look it up in here. This is by Ruth Winner. This is an older version. There is a newer version of this book out there. And if you're interested in, in uh, lotions or perfumes or things, there are many books out there. This one it just happens to be one that I have, Pure Skin Organic Beauty Basics by Barbara Close. It's a, a pretty book with nice photos and um, recipes in it. Talks about the essential oils. And if you go to a health food store, they often have books on essential oils so you can learn a little bit more about the different ones that are out there. So there's lots out there. These certainly aren't the only ones. They just happen to be the ones that I own. So you can do a Google search and find just about anything. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you enjoy making some of these cleaning products to make your home clean and safe.